This task will teach you the basics of Inkscape, which is an open source vector editing program similar to Adobe Illustrator. We're going to use Inkscape to complete our map design. The reason we're using Inkscape to complete the map design is because QGIS doesn't allow for multiple QGIS project maps to be displayed on a single print composer. There is actually a workaround to do this, but it's a little clunky and confusing. So we're going to use Inkscape. And exporting maps for final composition in a graphics editing program is a common workflow for cartographers. And so we're not working outside of what would be considered a normal workflow here. So I've got Inkscape open right now. It's in version 0.91. And I'll introduce the interface. So across the top is the menu bar, which provides access to Inkscape's capabilities. Many of these capabilities are also provided in the other bars on the interface for faster access. Below that is the tools control bar. And this contains tools to select, rotate, position, scale, and arrange objects and nodes in the composition. The toolbox is the bar along the left-hand side. And this has tools that allow for selection, vertex editing, zooming, drawing, text editing, among other things. The first part of this uh, toolbar up here is the commands bar, which provides quick access to the standard open, save, tools, print, import, export, copy, paste, and quick zoom commands. Along the right-hand side is the snap controls bar, which gives you access to a variety of snapping controls. We won't be using this in this lab. Across the bottom here is the palette, which gives you access to colors. Below the palette is the status bar, and this gives you things like location of your mouse cursor, selective colors, tells you which is the active layer, layer visibility information, and locked status information. Any of these toolbars can be shown or hidden by clicking the View menu, Show Hide, toggling them off and on. So Inkscape's a quite powerful program and has hundreds of commands at its disposal. So for this lab, you'll only use a small subset of the commands to design your map layout. But you're encouraged to further explore Inkscape's capabilities as many of these extra features we won't be using could be useful for future map designs. So I'm going to run through some of the commands that you'll rely on heavily in this lab. Starting over here with the select tool, this black cursor. This tool allows you to select objects on the composition. And once an object is selected, its handles will appear, graphic handles. And you can select those to scale and transform the objects. A little below that is the zoom in or out tool. And this operates similar to the one in a GIS package. It lets you left click or drag a box to zoom in, right click to zoom out. A little below that is the Create Rectangles and Squares button. So you can simply drag a box with it to create a rectangle. If you want to create a square, you'd hold down the Control key on your keyboard. Once that's on the map composition, you can set the fill and stroke color to different colors. Below that is this Draw Bezier Curves tool. By clicking and dragging on the map composition, you can create Bezier Curves with this tool. You can click, move, and then click again to create a straight line segment or double click to complete the line or curve. If you hold down the control key on your keyboard, you can have the line rotate in 15 degree increments. Up by the squares, this other shape, create circles, ellipses, and arcs. You can use this to create exactly that, circles, ellipses, and arcs. Below that, we have this tool with the, the letter A, which is the Create and Edit Text Objects tool. So this allows you to start a text object and type in the desired text. Up along the top here, we've got the Import and Export buttons. So you'll be using the import button to bring your PDFs into Inkscape. This command lets you select the file and import the document. To the right of that, we've got these uh, buttons for grouping and ungrouping graphic features. So the group tool will group selected features, and the ungroup tool will ungroup selected features, explode them into their individual components. Beyond that is the edit objects, colors, gradients, arrowheads, and other fill and stroke properties tool definitely a mouthful. So this is the general editing tool that will open up the fill and stroke panel and allow you to select an object's properties. Next to that is the view and select font family. So you'd use this to specify the font size and style of text. Next to that is the view layers button. And this command opens the layers panel. So if I click on that, We'll open up the layers panel on the right hand side and this panel displays all the layers in the composition and allows you to set the layer name, visibility, opacity, and lock status of those layers. Additionally, you can add and remove layers and set the draw order of them. So in this way, Inkscape will be similar to a GIS where you'll have different layers on the map that you can move in drawing order as well as toggle off and on. Next to that is this align and distribute objects button and if I click that it'll open up the align and distribute 
panel. And this panel has numerous commands that will set the alignment and distribution of selected objects. So in general, an Inkscape document contains multiple layers of objects, and each object has multiple properties such as color, stroke, thickness, opacity, and position. So multiple objects can be grouped for control of multiple objects simultaneously, or ungrouped for finer individual object control. For instance, a square can be ungrouped so that the stroke is a single object and the fill is a single object. Grouping and ungrouping and layering objects allows for powerful and fine-grained control over the Inkscape document and objects within it. So now you have a brief overview of Inkscape's layout and we can get to work designing our map.